the Lord God Almighty. Make his strength. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Israel. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness my loving greetings to each and every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ my name is David Turner and I want to welcome you to this week's program the gospel is the power this week God has placed upon my heart to continue the message that we began last week. And it was entitled, My God is Dreaming About You. Amen. I shared last week how every man can count the number of seeds in a fruit, but God alone can count the number of fruit that will come from a seed. We see how people so many times are looking at you and determining who you are, based upon your past, but you need not worry or be concerned, for my God is dreaming about you, and he's dreaming about your future. Amen? Last week, we shared with you the lives of Joseph and Daniel and Jephetha. This week, I want to share with you the life of Jabez, the life of Esther, the life of David, and also touch on the life of Paul. Amen? Hallelujah. First, let's look at the life of Jabez. We see his prayer before God in the Bible in the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. The name Jabez, it means pain and sorrow. His mother and all the people saw Jabez as a pain and a sorrow. Maybe people in your life, they look at you as a pain and a sorrow. But here is the good news for you. The Bible says in Isaiah 25, verse 8, Isaiah 53, verse 3, that Jesus Christ came. He became a man of sorrows so that he could wipe away your tears. And it says in John 16, verse 20, that he removes your sorrow and gives you the joy. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, you see, your life, wherever you go, you may think, I bring the pain and I bring the sorrow wherever I go. But, like Jabez, but I tell you right now, it'll be no more in your life. For the Bible says in Psalm chapter 30, verse 5, and Psalm 30, verse 11, that God, Jesus Christ, wants to turn your mourning into dancing. Amen? No more pain and sorrow but joy and dancing unto your life. This is the dream that my God has for you. Amen? So we see this Jabez, how he petitioned and he prayed to the Lord. It says, Jabez called upon the name of the Lord. Precious people of God, my God's dream for you is that you would call upon his name. The Bible says in Isaiah 58, verse 9, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, and Psalm 50, verse 15, in all the places when you call upon the Lord, it says that he will answer you. His dream is that you would call upon him that he might answer you. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, that God's promises are yes and amen. In 1 Kings 8, 56, that he never fails. And we see also in all the places in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 18 
Numbers 23, 19, and 1 Samuel 15, verse 29, in all the places, it says that God never lies. The dream that he has for you, his promises are yes and amen. His word, Isaiah 45, verse 23, will not return void in your life. Amen? Whatever the dream that God has for you, it will happen in your life. Praise the Lord. We see Jabez, he says, Oh God, that you would bless me. So the, the dream that God has for you is that he wants to bless you. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 26, Haggai 2.19, it says that God's dream is to bless you from this day with showers of blessing. Amen? Jabez prayed to God and said, God, that you would expand my territory. So God's dream, precious people of God. Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 4 in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 16. God is dreaming that he can expand your territory. And Jabez also prayed. He said, God, deliver me from all evil. Book of John, chapter 8, verse 36, it says that if the Son of Man delivers you, surely you will be delivered. So God's dream for your life is that he would deliver you from all the evil, for he wants to deliver the Son of Righteousness. The Bible says in Romans, chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, and 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 21, that we are righteous because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So God's dream is to deliver you. Finally, Jabez said, oh God, that you would put your arm around me. Precious people of God, you need not worry for the dream of God. Isaiah 41, verse 10, is he wants to put his righteous arm all around you. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5, a fiery wall of protection from the enemy. Amen. This is God's dream for your life. We see how God he honored the prayer of Jabez. Same way, he wants to honor you. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. In all that you do, honor God and he will honor you. We must seek the honor of God and not the honor of man. John chapter 5, verse 44. Amen. So you see, all the people, they saw Jabez as a pain and a sorrow. But God saw him as a fortified city. Same way in your life, maybe people have seen you as a pain and a sorrow. And that's who you think you are in your life. But God wants to make you a city. We see in 1 Chronicles chapter 2, verse 55, it says that there's a city named after him. It's called the city of Jabez. Praise the Lord. Same way God wants to have the same dream for your life and make you a city. The Bible says in Isaiah 62, verse 10 to 12, no more you will be a forsaken city, but from now on, you shall be called sought after. Amen? Hallelujah. Precious people of God, dream for the great city in heaven and believe for the promise of God. Hebrews eleven sixteen 16, it says, and God will not be ashamed to be called your God. Hallelujah. The same way that God took the pain and the sorrow from Jabez and gave him the joy and the blessing. I tell you today, God has the same dream. His dream is to remove your pain and remove your sorrow and give you the joy and the blessing in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look right now at the life of Esther in the Bible. The name Esther means star or goddess in Hebrew. You see, book of Esther, chapter 2, verse 7. Esther did not have a mother or father. She was raised by her uncle, whose name was Mordecai. You see, all the people saw Esther as an orphan girl, but God saw her as a queen and one who would be used as an instrument to deliver the Jewish people from the oppression of the enemy. Amen? We see going on in Esther chapter 2, verse 9 to 15, she was taken to the palace and she was given the favor from the Enochs who were watching over her. You see, God has special mercy and compassion upon those who do not have a mother and a father. We see this in the Bible in the book of Hosea chapter 14, verse 3. Psalm 68, verse 5. You see, the people saw her as a forsaken orphan girl. But God said, no, 
She is my queen. She is a star. Amen. Precious people of God, God has the same dream about you. He's dreaming that you will be a star. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 12, verse 3, it says, he who wins souls is wise. It will shine like the stars in the heaven. God's dream is that you will shine like a star in the heaven. Amen. We see in Esther chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, that Esther becomes the queen. From an orphan girl to a queen, only God, with his dream for you, can do these kind of things, these kind of miracles. But it was for a purpose. We see in the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14, Mordecai sends a message to Esther as queen, saying that God has raised you up for such a time as this to deliver the Jewish people from the oppression. You see, when we are in God's dreams, when he has the dream about you, his dream is to put you in a place of influence and use you as an instrument to save the people. When we are given a position, she became queen. It wasn't for the sake of riches and wealth and for her to be comfortable. Yes, she got those things. She got the title. But it was because God wanted to use her in a significant way. Precious people of God, God wants to use you in a significant way. When he raises you up, it's not just for your benefit. He calls you from the darkness of life, darkness to light, so that you can be a blessing to others. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. So Esther was made the queen so she could be used to deliver the people. At that time, Haman, we see in the Bible, he had gone before the king and obtained a false edict so that the Jewish people could all be put to death. This is the time that Esther pray, said, pray and fast and I'll go before the king, even though it meant she could be put to death. She had to risk her life to fulfill the dream that God had upon her life. But we see in Esther chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, that she was able to explode, expose the plot of Haman, that he wanted to murder the Jews. And then we see in Esther chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, that all the wealth of Haman, his family, was given to Esther. And Haman was put to death on the very gallows that he meant to kill the Jews with. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the wicked is stored for the righteous. Amen? Precious people of God. You see, God had the dream. The people saw her as an orphan girl. But God had the dream for her to be queen and to deliver the Jewish people. The same way God has the dream for your life. Don't be thinking in your life, I'm alone, I'm lonely. I'm coming from nowhere. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, verse 4, it says that God says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. The very dream that he has for your life, even there aren't many people around your life, but God is with you. Amen? Believe for the dream that God will fulfill in your life. Same God of Esther will fulfill the same dream through your life. Amen? We look at the life of King David in the Bible. The name David means beloved. Hallelujah. We see how the people saw David as a shepherd boy, but God saw him as king. Same way in your life, my God is dreaming about you. Book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. It says that God has called you to be a king and a priest that he has called you from darkness to light so that you can be a royal priesthood in this chosen generation. Amen. This is the dream that God has over your life. The people said David is an ordinary shepherd. You might think in your life you're like an ordinary shepherd, but God said no. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 2, God says David is not an ordinary shepherd. He is called to shepherd my people. He's called to be king. Same way, God has the calling over your life. God wants to make you, his dream for you is that he wants to make you like a king in the spiritual realm. Amen? The same dream that God had for King David, he has for your life. 
We see in the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 22, it says that David is a man after God's own heart. I want you to see something special here. The people didn't say this about David. David did not say this about himself, but God called him a man after God's own heart. Precious people of God, you need not worry what the people think about you because of your past. It's not even about who you think you are. All that matters is that who God says you are. That is what's important to your life. Amen? Hallelujah. So we see in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 4, it says at the age of 30 that David became king over Judah. I want to digress with you for a moment. Think about this. He was anointed by Samuel so many years earlier while he was still a teenager to be king. The dream that God had was announced to him so, so early in his life. Yet as soon as that happened, he spent years running from Saul and hiding in the wilderness and fighting just for his life to survive. Precious people of God, here's an indication to you. Two things I want to share. When God has a dream for your life, you'll know it's from God because it's a dream that you couldn't possibly fulfill yourself. It takes the hand of God to fulfill it. If you can fulfill it, it's probably your dream and not God's dream. But the second thing I want you to see, this is a good indication for you. So many people, I might give them a word or show them something God has, because they'll come back later and say, brother, not only is it not happening, it feels like it's the very opposite is happening. That's the indication it's from God. I tell you today, precious people of God, the moment we see Joseph's life, he was promised to be a ruler, and yet what happened? He becomes a slave. He becomes a prisoner. We see Daniel's life. He's promised such a big dream of God. Instead, he's taken into captivity in Babylon, and then he's thrown in the lion's den. We see here David, same way. He's told he's going to be king, and instead he's running for his life. Precious people of God, the enemy always wants to make it look like God's dream for you will never happen and that it's not true and cause you to doubt. But I tell you, do not doubt your God. Doubt your doubts. Amen? Believe your God for the dream that he's placed in your life and be inspired by the fact that it sometimes looks like it's the very opposite of the plan of God. That's your indication that most likely it's a promise of God's dream for your life and it's going to happen. Amen? He became king at the age of 30. We see in 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, David got stronger and stronger, and the kingdom of Saul got weaker and weaker. Precious people of God, when my God is dreaming about you, he will strengthen you, and he will strengthen your inward man. Book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. It says that, that the Holy Spirit will strengthen you. Amen? Hallelujah. The people called David a shepherd. But the Bible says, Psalm 78, verse 52 and 53, God is your shepherd. We also see in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 20, Jesus Christ, he is your shepherd. And we also see in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 2, that the elders of your church, they are your shepherds. Amen? David was called to be a king by the dream of God. Same way. God is dreaming about you. God wanted to build the house of David. We see in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 11, same way God's dream for you is he wants to build your house. No matter, you might be homeless today. You might be living in an apartment. You might be in a small house. It not, does not matter. God's dream is that he wants to build your house. Psalm 127, verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. Amen? Proverbs 24, verse 3 and 4, it says, the house is built by wisdom. And that wisdom is Jesus Christ. We see that the house, Matthew 7, verse 24, must be built upon the rock. And that rock is the rock of Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. God, we see in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 12 to 16, he not only made David a king, but he strengthened his kingdom. Precious people of God, God not only wants to raise you up, but he wants to expand your territory. Same way in your life. This is his dream for you. We see how God made a covenant 
with King David. Book of Isaiah 55, verse 3. Second Chronicles, chapter 13, verse 5. And Second Chronicles, chapter 21, verse 7. In all the places you'll see how he made the covenant with King David. Precious people of God. My God is dreaming also about you. You are a descendant by faith in Jesus Christ of King David. And God wants to extend and fulfill the same covenant that he made with King David. He's dreaming that he can fulfill it through your life and extend it. Amen? Hallelujah. Same way God is dreaming about King David. My God is dreaming about you. Let's look for just a moment into the life of Paul. You know, Paul means little. You might be thinking, I'm so little, I can't have any impact. But I tell you today the good news. Isaiah 60, verse 22, God says, a small one, I'll make a thousand. A least one, I'll make a great nation. I will hasten it in my time. Amen. This is the dream that God has for you. He took Saul and he made him Paul. The people saw Paul. They saw him as a reproacher to the Christians, as one who consented to death. But God said, he's my apostle. Same way God is dreaming about you. Walk in that dream of being an apostle in your life. Amen? We see how Saul became Paul. The book of Acts chapter 7, verse 57 and 58. Book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. Book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 1 to 3, verse 11, and verse 13. In all the places you will see in those places when you read how Paul, he consented to the death of Stephen. And he was such a problem for all the Christian people, dragging them out, beating them, hurting them, coming against them. But God changed him from a Saul to a Paul. God's dream for you today, precious people of God, is to change you from a Saul to a Paul. Paul began to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's dream is that you will preach that same gospel of Jesus Christ and lift up the name of Jesus. Through Paul, we see how God did so many miracles. Acts 19, verse 11 and 12, even Paul's handkerchief would heal the sick. Precious people of God, my God is dreaming about you. He's dreaming that he can use you by faith, that through you he will even heal the sick. This is our living God and his dream for your life, so much more than even your dream for yourself. Precious people of God, I want you to see, when it looks like things may not be happening in your life, Hold on to the verse in the word of God. Job said in Job 42, verse 1, he said, my God can do all things. His plans and his purposes, his dreams, shall never be defeated in your life. Amen? Book of Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. It says, he who began the good work in you shall be faithful to complete it. God, Isaiah 46, 10, he's the God who declares the end from the beginning. In the same way in your life, he's had the dream since the foundations of the world about not who you've been, but who you're going to be. My God is dreaming about you. Precious people of God, the same God, the God of Joseph, the God of Daniel, the God of Jephthah, the God of Jabez, the God of Esther, the God of David, the God of Paul. He's had a dream for each one of these that was different than the way the people saw him. And the same way in your life, he has a dream for you. And God's ways, Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, are not our ways. He's not seeing you the way the people are seeing you based on your past. He is seeing you, precious people of God, based upon his dream for your life. He's seeing your future. So I encourage you, precious people of God, My God, his name is Jesus Christ, your God. He's dreaming about you. Walk in the dream that he has for you and glorify Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's pray together right now, precious people of God. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy One of Israel, God who declares the end from the beginning. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. We declare by your word, O God, not in our words but yours, 
My God can do all things. His plans and purposes shall never be defeated. There's nothing that you can't do, O God. Lord Jesus Christ, I right now bring every person watching today before you. Holy Spirit, flow over their lives right now. O God, by the authority you've given me, I bind, rebuke, and destroy the work of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of discouragement, every spirit of depression, every spirit of confusion, I cast out by the finger of God, per Luke eleven twenty. 20, in the name of Jesus. Every fear, worry, anxiety, I cast it out of their lives in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of doubt right now, in the name of Jesus, I cast it out. Every spirit of self-reliance trying to come up in the life by the power of the flesh, right now I cut it off their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, from this day, our hearts are yours. We lift our eyes unto the hills where our help comes from. It comes from you, O oh God. From this day, your dream be revealed to each and every person who does not know your dream and your purpose for their lives. Lord Jesus Christ. Give them the strength. Give them the power, the Holy Spirit power. Give them the courage and the blessing to walk. Oh God, even as Esther had to give her life that she could have been killed to step into the destiny you had. The same way, give us the courage, oh God, to do what you've called us to do, no matter what the consequences, no matter how foolish it looks, that we would follow your dream for our lives. Lord Jesus Christ, pour out your power, pour out your grace and your mercy on those who don't have as much, those who are orphaned, those, Lord Jesus Christ, who have been attacked by the enemy, who have made in their minds to think that they are small or they are not Nothing. Raise them up like kings and queens and princesses in the kingdom seated at your right hand with you in the heavenly realms. Lord Jesus Christ, fulfill, fulfill from this day every dream that you've placed upon their lives. Give them, Lord Jesus, the hope and the inspiration and the courage to walk in the destiny that you've called them in. Be with them, bless them, encourage them this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and I bless all God's people. Amen. Hallelujah. Precious people of God, I encourage you today. My God is dreaming about you. Have sweet dreams. And we'll see you next week on The Gospel is the Power. Make his Make straight his path in the wilderness. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness. Let your Let your rain fall in.